up guys welcome back to the channel here we are with another reaction and in this one we got india's semiconductor revolution israel and iit modules make history i know that in israel is the indian space research organization who have done so much at much less than like nasa they've done so much with a much 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 lower budget than NASA. So shout out to Israel and IIT. I know that's like, I guess the equivalent in the US would be an MIT. Um, it'd be one of the top institutions in India, if uh, Chris correct me if I'm mistaken. Uh, so I'm excited to see what they're doing with the semiconductor revolution. Before we dive in, if you guys happen to enjoy, please, please, please don't forget to smash subscribe. Get a video a thumbs up. Also, if you like support the channel by becoming a member, all you got to do is hit that join button to receive your exclusive benefits. See what we got. For decades, India relied on imported semiconductors yeah. for space missions. But that is changing now. Mm. IIT Madras and ISRO have developed IRIS, India's first RISC-V based microprocessor for space applications. Yeah. This made in India chip was designed fabricated, packaged, and booted entirely within the country. Wow. Built on the Shakti processor baseline, it's a breakthrough in India's self-reliance in semiconductor tech. I'm very Ooh. thankful to both ISRO and- That's pretty awesome. India becoming self-reliant when it comes to semiconductor chips. And we know semiconductor, I mean, it's the way of the future at this point. If you look at the um, company, I believe it's based out of, is it Sweden? I think it's based out of Sweden that makes the most precise and amazing semiconductor chips. They have the machinery to make the most amazing and precise semiconductor chips in the world. Um, but it's amazing that India's finna take it on themselves and they've created their own. Like, that is awesome. And Semiconductor Laboratory Chandigarh. I'm thankful to the chairman Isro, Dr. Narayanan, and Sri Padma Kumar, who is the director of IISU. Uh, f for enabling this partnership wherein a lot of inputs had come from ISRO to make this really? aerospace quality and I'm very happy to note that ISRO will be using this in many of their coming projects. That's IIT right. Madras mentioned that this ensures advanced false tolerance and computing reliability for ISRO missions. Why does this matter you ask? Space missions need radiation hardened high reliability processors with the global chip shortage self-sufficiency is very crucial india is building its own semiconductor ecosystem so how was iris built but let us tell you it was designed it's really it's really so amazing that uh yeah it's made everything all everything about the chip was done in india they're gonna israel is gonna use it um on a you say like a mission to space i believe um that's awesome, dude. And tested at IIT Madras, fabricated at SCL Chandigarh, India's premier semiconductor lab, was packaged by Tata Advanced mm. Systems in Karnataka. The motherboard development happened in PCB Power in Gujarat and was assembled by Sarma SGS in Chennai, which means, in the truest sense, Ahatmanirbhar Bharat. This is India's first fully in house semiconductor project for space applications. What makes Iris special but risk 5 architecture, open source, scalable for various applications. It has a 64-bit controller, which is built for strategic computing and IoT fault-tolerant design. It ensures high reliability in space environments. Multiple boot modes are there and it has a hybrid memory as well, which is future-proof and adaptable. What's next, you might ask? ISRO is planning flight tests very soon. This chip could power future space missions, satellites, Dang. and deep space probes. Why this changes everything for India's AI and space tech is that India is no longer just a chip consumer. It's becoming a chip producer. That's government that's huge. initiatives like Digital India Risk 5, DIR5 are pushing for full stack semiconductor development. I feel like anytime you can start making things yourself in your own country that takes away that reliance on any other countries and that's always huge like if you can become fully self-reliant dog like you ain't got to worry about getting things from any other countries like 
you just think of all the possibilities that that can lead to. And then you start to become the seller to other countries, right? Now you become the country that they rely on. And so them starting with this semiconductor chip, as time continues to pass, maybe they take it to a whole new level. And now other countries are coming to India. Like, can we get some semiconductor chips? And so them being self-reliant is that first step. And then they you step onto the scene where now other countries are reliant on you. Uh, that's awesome. With companies like, say, Tata, SCL, and startups entering the space ecosystem, India is gearing up for a silicon revolution. What will the impact be? Let us tell you. Self-reliance in aerospace and defense. Mm. India will now enter the global semiconductor race in full throttle. I love it. it will strengthen AI, IoT, and advanced computing sectors. And all of this is just the beginning. While ISRO is building space-grade chips, India's commercial semiconductor industry is also taking off. Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav just announced that India's first commercial semiconductor chip developed by Tata Electronics will be launched by September or October 2025. The chip will be produced at India's first semiconductor lab in Dholera, Gujarat, in partnership with Power Chip Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, PSMC. This is part of Semicon India, a 76,000 crore INR initiative to establish India's semiconductor and display ecosystem. To power India's AI revolution, the government is launching the India AI mission portal soon, providing 14,000 GPUs ah, for compute hey. access. 10,000 yeah. GPUs are already secured from major players like Yota Data Service, Tata Communications, AWS, and E2E networks. The remaining 4,000 GPUs will be procured from Geo Platforms and Control S data centers. 70% are high-end NVIDIA H100s, enabling advanced AI training. Why does all of this matter, if you might ask? Yeah. Well, it will democratize AI, lowering barriers for small players as well. Mm -hmm. It will accelerate India's entire AI ecosystem. The message it's is loud and clear. India is no longer just a consumer of technology, nah. but a creator. What's the next frontier? Scaling from 180 nanometer to sub-28 nanometer chip manufacturing as India's fab ecosystem matures even more. The world is watching. Yeah. Is India ready to lead? I think it is. I think what do you so. think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, do not forget to share it with a fellow AI enthusiast. And of course, for more such real-time live updates from the world of AI and tech just like this, don't forget to subscribe to AIM Media House because Think AI, think AI am. I think for sure India is ready to be a leader in the world. And this is just, is just one step towards that goal. That's all we've got for this video. I'd love to hear your comments, uh, your thoughts in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to smash subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the next. I'll see y'all next time.